All right, well, welcome back to uh, Mud Nugget from Scripture. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. I'm going to keep this short and sweet because I wasn't intending on uh, even recording a video today or posting anything at uh, worship practice tonight or at least uh, the audio visual and stuff uh, for, for worship for church tonight. Uh, and got some things I want to try to get done to church uh, before 5 o'clock. It's 3.30, so I still got to finish getting ready for church. But I wanted to share this with you guys real quick. Um, you know, if you're new, um, on just about everything I talk about on here is a Bible study, how we can apply it, something that came up, you know, in a study and, uh, you know, how, how it stood out to me, what's something I can do in my life, um, you know, that's applicable. So just kind of a little backstory here uh, over the past couple of days, really since, let's see, probably since Monday, I suppose. Um, well, for the past few weeks, uh, I had been out uh, in the, the detention center, the detention center uh, down um, about 30 miles from where I live, but it's a, the detention center for this county. And every time I drove by there, I thought, you know, and I went by it twice a day, I'm driving out there and I was like, man, you know, this is like a plowed field that is ready to be harvested, like the just waiting for the seeds to get planted and the harvest to be taken, you know, as far as, uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, biblically speaking, if you will, you know, as far as, as uh, people that uh, need the truth and that I want to share the truth with, you know, they're there and they're willing to hear. A lot of them are willing to hear. And even those that aren't necessarily even willing to hear are willing to go to a Bible study because it gets them out of their cell and they get to, you know, go and do something. It counts as recreational activity, um, even though it's so much more than that's what it counts as. So this is something that's been, you know, been thinking about. About two or three months ago, my girlfriend had talked to the warden down there. She's friends with this person and, um, you know, uh, had said, you know, what, what kind of activities do they have? Cause I had thought about this, like going to the prison is a good place to go. We live in a small community, but there's people in and out and it gives you the opportunity to be able to teach people for them to take it, uh, to other places. Cause they don't stay forever here. You might have them for a couple, two or three weeks, and then they go off to another facility. So you can train them, you know, or teach them a little bit, you know, get them into the word, get them interested in, get a, get them into a Bible study somewhere else. Some of those people that are there longer, you can do more discipleship with. There's just lots of opportunities in, in a, de a detention center. So I talked about it and she had talked to the warden, you know, and he said, you know, these things count as recreational activities, but it, it kind of never really went any further than that. And just uh, Monday, our pastor sent out a message on our church app that said, hey, so the warden or not the warden, the, um, the uh, chaplain for the detention center uh, is looking for some people that would be willing to go in and do uh, outreach, go in and do ministry in the in the detention center. And, uh, you know, they're looking for both men and women. Uh, and so I was like, yeah, OK, well, that's something that I have been working on, you know, along with all of the a lot of the other things that I'm doing um, with our addiction ministry and things like that. And I thought, you know, this is just going to be a great opportunity. Spent yesterday uh, two hours talking with uh, my pastor and, uh, you know, just kind of about what the plan was, like what we needed to do, thoughts on the whole thing. And, uh, you know, it was it was a really good meeting. And, you know, throughout it, through the rest of the day, I'm just praying like, OK, um, this is probably something that's going to happen. I know that there are things that I need to work on. And one of the things that I know that I need or, or something that I've struggled with, at least in the past, has been humility, like realizing that it's not anything that I do. Um, it's all stuff that God has done. You know, he's put things in my way. He's put ideas in my head. Uh, oftentimes these are things, you know, like these are things that we have the potential to do, but we never really realize them. But we never realize that full potential because we're just busy living in sin, uh, living in uh, a life that's, you know, separated from God. We're not reconciled. The relationship is broken. And uh, we're getting into what I want to talk about today. It's because this is very interesting. Um, you know, with all of these things, with the addiction ministry and with the prison and stuff coming up, um, you know, I've been doing a lot of praying just, you know, over the last day. And I told God, you know, if there's things that need to happen, um, things that I need to work on, you know, I know humility is one of them. Let's work on these things. And I can't, I need your help because as humans, we're prideful. The first sin came from pride. We're just prideful beings naturally. This morning for my devotion, I was reading in uh, Luke. Bookmark in my Bible is still in Luke where I stopped. I had set my Bible and I normally don't, you know, I'm not making anything up like this. Normally it's going to be something like, I don't believe that that happened. I had put my Bible on this chair. It's the afternoon, but that's where I put my Bible um, this morning. I just kind of set it back there because I left it open because I read it and I was thinking about it for the rest of the day and I had to move it and just it ended up sitting back there. Um, this is not normally something, you know, like I said, that I would think like, yeah, you're kind of full of crap when something like this happens. So there's my Bible sitting there where it is and it's open to the exact same page that it um, has been opened with ever since I quit my devotion. I left my Bible open in Luke. 
um, I believe it was in chapter nine. I left my ribbon bookmarker there and thought, you know, um, I'm going to set it down. Maybe I'll pick it back up here in a little bit and do some reading. And I was going to pick it up and just put it uh, away as I was kind of organizing a couple of things. And I stopped as I just looked down. I was like, whoa, that's not in Luke anymore. It's in Isaiah. And I did not think um, about, you know, I, or I'm sorry, as I was, I had to turn this back on so I can read it because I had that pulled up here on my, on my iPad. But as I was, um, you know, looking at it, thinking like, why is it open here to Isaiah? I don't uh, remember um, even touching it since I set it down. I was going to, I was going to set it down or, you know, come back and pick it up. Um, but I don't remember touching it to grab it, but it had been open to Isaiah and it was open to Isaiah 64. I remember setting it down in Luke and somehow it ended up on Isaiah 64. And so I was like, hmm, I don't remember doing this, but that's all right. Let's see what God has to say. And <laughs> In Isaiah chapter 64, we have verse 6, and it's popped out at the page because it's got some highlighted things under it. It's got uh, some specific words um, like all and us, uh, inclusive of all of us, you know, in the context of what it's being written about, um, kind of talking about Israel and the things that are going on in Israel with judgments that are going to be coming. Um, but it stood out to me nonetheless. So let me read this. Isaiah, ch Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 says, but we are all like an unclean thing and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And so this is what stood out to me in this. Like I just picked it up. I was like, hmm, I don't remember being in Isaiah. Let's see what God has to say in here because you can pick it up and open it and God will tell you something. And I just, I looked at those words and I thought, so I need to, this is, this is telling me about humility. I need to remain humble and all of these things and seek God in his will, that these are things that he's going to do that I'm not going to be able to accomplish because I didn't even know how to go about accomplishing getting into the prison, the right people to talk to things. Like I kind of have a little bit of a, a criminal history. Is that going to be a problem? You know, just these things that I was different worried about or uh, things that I was worried about, different things I was thinking about. I didn't know how to go about this. The door has been open. And so now we have the opportunity to go in there and it reminded me to be humble. Um, you know, that knowing that none of these things that I'm going to do, uh, are going to be apart from God's doing that I'm in there to teach the word. It's not something that I do. Yeah. If there's a great harvest, that wasn't me. That was God. God used me as the conduit, but I'm going to, uh, that I need to remain humble because all of, uh, I am like an unclean thing. All of us are like unclean things. We all are, uh, we are all filled with sin and it says all our righteousness are like filthy rags, all our ourselves, our own righteousness are like filthy rags. Um, so if our good works are like filthy rags in God's eyes, like how disgusting must our sin be to him? Um, and again, it just, it, it brought me about to that, you know, that, uh, idea of humility and, and remaining humble before God and knowing that everything that I could do that is good, all of my righteousness, everything that I do on my own that I think is good, apart from what God does in my life, all of those good things are like filthy rags to God. And also because if my righteousness, what I do do that I think is good apart from him uh, is good, uh, my sin is even more disgusting than even my righteousness. And so I need to make sure that I have everything right before God. Um, and this is a message, not just to me, but, you know, to, to anyone out there that is, um, you know, going into the ministry, if you're going into the ministry or if you're doing things, you know, getting involved, or maybe you're working in a ministry and, and we're wondering why we, you know, keep hitting brick walls. I've been that person like, man, why is this ministry not going anywhere? What, what can I do different? Um, I can't do anything more except make sure my relationship is in God and then let him do the work. And we can just be the conduit. And that's how I am like with our addiction ministry right now is I have done all that I can do. I put flyers out. We've talked to people. We've been to courts. Uh, we've been to, you know, domestic violence shelters and the DWI uh, counselors. And I've been to all of these different places and talked to these people. Now it's in God's hands. I did what I can do. He called me to get into this ministry, being a person that wants to help people uh, get out of addiction because I spent a lot of my life in there. That's why I even have this channel out there is to share our addiction uh, ministry with everyone else on the Internet. Um, you know, um, but it's got to this point where there's nothing else I can do like physically in this world, except for continue to be faithful, to show up on Friday nights and have our Zoom meetings. Everything else is in God's hands. Um, those were all things that I felt led to do. So it's not things that I was trying to do on my own. Now there are things that I've tried to do on my own in my old church um, without preying on things, things to try to help raise money and, you know, let people know that the church is there. But when we have, you know, uh, 
uh, when our church is separated, when we're not living according to Christ, when we're separated and we're not living according to Christ, things are not going to necessarily go our way. So that's it. That's what I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, uh, it's shorter than most videos. I wasn't planning on doing this. I got things I got to do for the rest of the day. Um, but just remember, anytime that we start getting proud, um, that all uh, you know, proud of things that we're doing, all of our good works in God's eyes are um, those as filthy rags. And this was talking about Israel, and Israel was God's chosen people. So it's the same thing for us being the church. The church um, has not replaced Israel, but we are the church. We have access to God, and God uses us. Um, and all of our righteousness are the same. We have to remain humble and know that we have nothing apart from God. The good news is, though, that we can be uh, stewards of God and servants for God. We can be ministers of God's word um, because he allows us to do those things. And above all, we have Jesus. And that is the hope. That is the whole reason for even serving and being in the ministry is to tell people about the good news of uh, of Jesus, tell, tell people the gospel message, you know, that Jesus came, died on the cross, rose again on the third day. That was the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. And because of that, we now have access to God and salvation uh, for sins, for all those, uh, those that are in Christ, for all who will come to him, who will follow him. Um, and it's really that simple, but remain uh, humble guys. And um, let's, uh, doing this on my phone. And so I get notifications, um, you know, let's, let's just remember to remain humble and pray about things. You know, if there's things that you're struggling with, pray about, uh, pray about them to God, bring those things up to God. He wants us to pray to him. That's how we communicate with God and make sure to stay in your word. Staying in our word is how Jesus speaks to us, how God speaks to us. Love you guys. Stay grounded in God's word. Make sure to be in your Bible every day reading. That's no important, more important thing than you can do than being in prayer and being in your Bible. Uh, reading and studying God's word and seeing what he has to say for you. So God bless. Stay grounded. Get in church tonight. Um, you know, find a church near you. Make sure it's a Bible teaching church and um, just go and, uh, uh, you know, go see what God has to say to you tonight. I, and I encourage you to go be in person unless circumstances for whatever reason uh, keep you from it. If you're sick or something like that, you know, don't just sit at home and watch online. Go in fellowship with your brothers. We are all the body and we need each other. So stay grounded, stay in God's word. God bless. Hope you're in church tonight. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.